Okay, so we're going to call this meeting to uh, order. Um, tonight on our agenda, we've got a fair amount of board education and ownership uh, linkage material to go through. Um, and we are doing monitoring of treatment of students and treatment of staff um, from the previous year. Um, we're going to start uh, with public comment. And as I am trying to make it clear to the public how we do public comment, I'm just going to read to everyone here um, the expectations for public comment. The board welcomes public welcomes comments, but it is not able to take any action on them other than to direct the public to the appropriate staff member or to the complaint procedure. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Time may not be ceded to another speaker. Comments are to be addressed to me, the board chair, or the board as a whole, not to any individual on the board, on the staff, or in the public. Please raise your hand and wait to speak until you are asked to by me. Please identify yourself with your first and last name and your town of residence. Please refrain from restating co comments that have already been shared. You can express agreement with those comments. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Shouting and profanity are prohibited. As the board chair, I will maintain the order and a quorum of the meeting. <clears throat> so I'm opening the meeting to public comment. Please raise your hand. Go ahead. So Lindsay Schwarnier, I live in Randolph, Vermont. So I have a son that is in the third grade, and I'd have to say that I have major concerns over the high school. Um, if you even go on Zillow and you go to greatschools.org, we have a 1.2 star rating whereas Sharon Academy has a 4.2 star rating. And that's a little concerning. You know, I feel like this school has been plagued by principals grooming the children, Chick-fil-A, not, we're not agreeing with what they're saying, the BLM flag, the mascot, the trans in the, in the bathroom, the CRT in the school district. I'm having a really hard time seeing how you guys are making a safe, happy, and healthy learning environment for these children. And it's really a great concern that I do not get any good feedback about this school district. The only feedback that I have gotten is that the reason why these kids do well is because it's their parents that are pushing them to do it. So the, you even said in an in a email that we have a good attendance rating and we have a good um, graduation rating. Behind that is the parents that are pushing their kids to go to school, to graduate. So it's hard for me to when the test scores are so low. And to say that below average is the average, it's not cutting it. When you have parents that are, you know, the big force behind their kids, you guys have to take some responsibility as a school district to do better for them and to make a safe, happy, and healthy environment. And this has been plagued, I mean, all over the news, not one person has ever said to me anything good about Randolph School District. I do take it back, though, because the elementary school is pretty good. And I haven't heard any complaints about the elementary school. It's just the high school. Not one good thing. And that's just a concern for me. You know, I want better for my kids. And I think this school district can be great. I really think you guys can do so much. But you have to focus on the education piece. And then with all the other side stuff, you have to make sure everybody's safe. Just because somebody doesn't agree with your point of view doesn't make them a bad person. It shouldn't make them get suspended from school or fired from their job. I just, I guess I'm just a little disappointed in the school district. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Um, okay, I, w I just went to the sports, began the sports meeting. Can you please tell us your name and the oh. town of residence? <coughs> I'm from Randolph and what's your name? Jill Hopper. Jill Hopper. And yes. And okay. Do you need anything more? That's it. We live here. No, that's fine. Okay. That's, we um, just, we have a grandson that goes to high school. 
and uh, they promised him they were going to have a track and field uh, team for him to go to down at White River. And uh, now we're finding out, I just found out, that no one has done anything about it. And on the 28th, he's been practicing all fall, waiting for this great moment, you know, to go down there because he wants to do it. He wants to be on the team, the sports team. And uh, we're, I don't know what to do. <laughs> but you don't have a track and field run going around the athletic field here. You don't even offer it. So uh, I don't know what to do. I have to go back and t tell them that it looks like it's kaput. And why? <laughs> why can't they come up with it? They promised it. His mother signed up for it. <clears throat> so I don't know I don't who to speak to about it. I would, I would say that you might start with the athletic director, Nick Bent, and find out more. You could also talk with you. Uh, okay, how, how would I just call the school office and ask to talk with them? Mm -hmm. Make an appointment, whatever. Mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> <coughs> Go ahead. Please in your cap. Nick Thresher, East Randolph. I felt that I needed to come and speak for the people who don't want to say anything due to fear of repercussions. It's not an irrational fear. We all saw what happened with Travis Allen and John Helfam. To remind you, what we had here was a group of 14-year-old girls who felt uncomfortable with this transgender student in the locker room when they were changing. When brought to Lane's attention, his response was, wah, it's state law, and completely dismissed comments the child made while in there. I'm sorry, but that's not how things are done here. We all understand what the law is, and that isn't what we're trying to change. We are trying to make sure that the school accommodates everyone as the atmosphere changes. When I say everyone, I mean transgender students and young women. It's really sad to see how this community has responded to Lane's divisive behavior. Instead of solving the problem, he chose to pin one side of the community against the other, saying that if you don't agree with him, you're a bigot and full of hate. Now hold on, this is a small community. You all know me, you all know all of us. You really think we're all just a bunch of bigots because we wanna stand up for a bunch of young girls? I've seen way too many tragedies involving young women in this area for me to sit back and shut my mouth when they're saying that something is wrong. We all have beliefs and we all have feelings. Believe it or not, all we want to do is solve the problem at hand. Nobody here is against the transgender community. We are just here to stand up for girls who feel uncomfortable or unsafe. And when we say unsafe, don't run with it and say we're calling transgender people unsafe. What we are saying is unsafe is having 14-year-olds with varying genitalia changing in the same room. I was 14 once. I assume most of you remember that awkward time in your life. I assume most of you remember how well certain things were functioning too, and how well your 14-year-old brain was not. I'll remind you that these same kids cannot smoke or get a tattoo for another four years or drink for seven, all because we have deemed them not, immature, not mature enough to make life-altering decisions on their own. Yet at 14, you think with all the bad decisions you make, we can stick two sets of different genitalia in the same locker room. I think not. Remember that we don't need to just pr protect kids from each other, but also from themselves. I'll tell you this, I'm so glad to see the amount of people considering homeschooling that I am. It's sad to see people feel that they need to pull their kids from this school, but I'm so glad it's gaining traction. I think we all know why Lane sent out those divisive emails trying to cause all this turmoil. Look at the test scores. He doesn't want focus on something he promised to improve and failed horribly. He found a scapegoat and he's using every single one of us rated 37th out of 46 Vermont high schools. What a joke, Lane. I talk to lots of people every day, whether it's at the store, job site, or just Facebook, and the overwhelming response is that you need to go, Lane. We could have all stayed out of it had you had done your job. However, you have chosen not to listen to problems and to discipline anyone who dares question you. It's now the board's job to terminate your position, and if they cannot do that, I'm 100% with John Helfand in saying that every single one of you need to go. This whole thing could have been avoided with some damn stalls. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have another person or anyone online? Lane, I'm assuming you're watching the online. Sarah, I'm Okay, why don't 
we go with Sarah. I have something to say. Uh, can you hold on a minute? Yeah. Please, we'll do one there and then I'll come back. Okay. Sarah Crosby. Yeah. Go ahead. You have three minutes, Sarah. Okay. So I'm listening to a lot of these negative comments. I certainly, um, I certainly think it would have been better if, if locker rooms were safe for everybody and comfortable for everybody. And that's a problem we ought to be able to solve as a whole culture. But I want to remind people that um, safety, first of all, safety and comfort are two different things. You can be very uncomfortable while you're doing something where you accomplish something. I'm a little uncomfortable right now, for instance, because I'm speaking to a group of angry people. Um, I also want to remind people that danger comes from behavior. So, you know, we have conflicting reports about the behavior that happened in the locker room. And we as the public don't know. The people who know are the people who were involved who have given very different reports and the people who investigated it who are not allowed to speak as they should not be. It's confidential. And frankly, it's none of the community's business who did what. The issue is that kids are feeling unsafe without getting the, the getting what they need in order to understand that if you want to be safe, you have to watch people's behavior. If, there, if there's unsafe behavior, and if there was and it wasn't addressed, then that's a problem. But I, we don't know that. And I don't like that people are assuming the school board has done the wrong thing. Um, it, it, and if the behavior is not unsafe, then that's really not, um, you, you know, kids need to know. They need to know how to stand up for themselves without bullying. They need to know that um, how to watch other people's behavior to assess risk and where to turn when um, they, they find that they really are in danger. And um, we need to be, we need as a community to be teaching our kids how to handle those things. The greatest divisiveness in my observation has not come from the school board or the principals or Mr. Millington. It has come from hateful messages that have been called in and posted. And yes, I know that those are largely from the outside, but somebody local must have given away those children's names um, to the people making the calls. And even if 99% even if of the people who are um, angry and upset about at, with the school board had nothing to do with them, why haven't you been screaming from the rooftops what a terrible thing that is? Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Your time's up. Yep. Okay. My name's Anita Scott. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to get through this without being Count. upset. Count. I'm sorry. Randolph. You all think that we're pissed off about transgender. My fucking daughter was in there with a bra and her pants to her knees. It had nothing to do with her being scared. It's not right. It would have taken two seconds for you guys to fix something so my daughter's not seen it naked. I don't know why you don't understand that. I have two transgender in my family and don't give a shit. I don't care. I don't care that they are. What I care about is my daughter felt like she was violated. Violated is way different than being, like the school called me and said, do you want to press charges? No, just fix the dang problem. I had to never stood up for my daughter over this, and I should have, because all of these people are pissed off. All of them, and they're afraid to say anything, and so have I been, because I don't want her to get bigoted. That's what I was called, was a bigot, and she's been harassed and said she was a liar. My daughter's story has not changed. Blake's story has not changed, but they got shit for it. I don't want my kid to have that. But now I'm standing up because it's not right. Put a dang stall in there. Don't make all 10 kids go to a different room to change when you could have just said, hey, you know, you guys are, this is how we're gonna fix this. You're making people uncomfortable. Do you think it'd be okay for you to maybe change into one stall instead of making everyone else do it? I don't mean to cry and be pissed off, but for God's sakes, my kid is 14. She was in a bra and naked to her knees and said, please don't come in, I'm naked. 
and it didn't matter. I called the school the next morning and they said, we're sorry, that's all we can offer you. If your daughter's uncomfortable, she can go change some other place. So Ava, being who she is, takes it on and takes all of the girls into the boys' locker room. Well, that made everyone else mad because she didn't identify as a boy. No kidding. She just wanted to have everyone be able to change in one room without having me such an ordeal. This has been made out so much worse than it was. That last meeting was terrible. Not one of us said we were scared for our kids' life or that they were being beat up or molested or touched inappropriately. They didn't like to be seen naked. That's all. They're 14. They don't want... Yes, he is now a she. He still has a penis, and that's what these kids have feared and said, we don't like that. They, we don't want them in here changing with us. It could have been changed so much easier than all of this. You know, my daughter felt terrible that I didn't stand up for her. I feel bad for all of these parents that are afraid to stand up because they're afraid of what's going to happen to their kids down the road. Thank you for your comments. We have someone else. I'll speak. <clears throat> my name is Molly Mullen. I'm from Randolph. Um, I want to start by saying we elected the school board. It's something we have to vote on. And if you don't didn't want these people here, you shouldn't have voted for them. You are free to write anybody in. There's only so much that these people can do. There's only so much that Lane can do. There are laws we have to follow when it comes to releasing information about children that we work with. You can't, my kid has been bullied for the past three years in school. I'm not allowed to know who did it or what the repercussions were for that kid. Am I pissed? Absolutely. Sorry if I can't say that. Absolutely I'm mad because that's my baby and I want to protect him. There's only so much that they can do for us. And if you don't like it, then you should vote somebody else in. But I think these guys have done a pretty good job of sitting here and listening to all of you on a monthly, weekly, whatever, sometimes messages or phone calls. And you know what? They sit there and they take it. These people aren't the reason of the issue, and I think we need to stop throwing them under the bus and harassing them. With that being said, could things have been handled differently? Absolutely. We really do need to keep in mind that these are children, and we should not want to alienate a specific child based on how they are feeling in their body. I was 14, that locker room is horrendous. The last time I knew, though, was a big open space and there was a separate place. It's horrible being a teenager. It's even worse when you feel like you don't fit in. There is a solution here. We all know that there is a solution for both sides. We need to find the solution without being mean and harassing people, because our kids see that, and that's how they learn and grow. I was born and raised in this town, and this is not what I know. I know a loving town that accepts everybody, and who can get along through differences. I am not part of the hateful group here tonight. I want to come up with a change and that's why I'm here. I'm not here to point fingers and name names. I want both sides to feel safe because I want every child in this school to feel loved and safe no matter your opinion on this. Thank you very much. We have another one over there. Oh, we've got one over here. Please state your name and your town. Justin Ford, Randolph Center. Um, I agree. It must be a hard job for you guys, and I don't want to do it. I don't want to spend my Wednesday nights here. But people do need to speak up for things. Um, I don't easily get offended. I generally only concern myself with people and issues that directly impact mine and my family's lives. This is one of those topics. The fact that I voice my opinion in handling of the handling of this controversial issue and then immediately read our community members and school administrators name callings, dismissals, and outright slander to anyone who opposes their beliefs is disgusting. Just because someone has a different opinion or view on a topic, that doesn't give you the right to bash them, attack their livelihoods, or falsely accuse their children of criminal activity. Although I don't agree with LGBTQ community. I don't discriminate against them, harass them, or hate them. For the record, that's the proper English use of the word them. 
I have friends, family, employees, and customers that are part of the LGBTQ community. If any of them can say that I discriminate against them or hate them, I'll eat my hat. Just because we don't agree with your neighbor, we don't harass them, we belittle them. I understand you're going along with the Vermont Department of Education, but my opinion is that the issue of gender has no business being raised in schools. Kids need to be kids. They need to develop mentally, physically, and emotionally. A lot of this is repeated before making important decisions. It is, is that not why it's illegal for kids to smoke, drink, buy lottery tickets, and listen to the military, etc.? They might make a decision based off another individual's advice, example, or rhetoric that may adversely affect their health, happiness, or overall life. But it's okay for a child to decide they want to become a member of the opposite sex. To me, that's baloney. <clears throat> and one more thing, to have the highest official in our school district wrongfully accuse my son of a criminal act and then question him about it after specifically being advised that nobody has permission to question him without a parent being present is without question inappropriate and immoral. It seems as though half the community is for this type of behavior and half is against it. Yet this is yet is <clears throat> yet it is the half that is sympathetic to the boy in the locker room that is throwing around terms such as bigot, intolerant, misogyny, and bully, and even racist. I don't get it. The definition of a bully is to seek harm, intimidate, or coerce. It seems to me that you are the ones that are literally bullying. Same, same thing as a schoolyard bully just coming from a suit and tie or under the veil of a pride flag. Hi, John Helfand, parent of three OSSD students. So this argument or discussions got blown way out of proportion. This was never about uh, bi, gay, trans, or straight individuals. This is about people with male genitalia and people with female genitalia not being in the same bathroom, locker room, or shower room while one of the two is in various states of uh, undergarments or partially naked or naked. Period. That's as simple as I can make it. That's all it's about. If anything, it's about women's rights, girls' rights, which have been fought for in this country for over 100 years. This is a board made up of total, totally women. You know, when your uh, female children look back at these ORCA meetings, what will they think about you not standing up for their rights? As this woman said over here. Lane gave a deer hunting analogy. He said there was a guy in his uh, field walking his dog and two hunters came along and he said the guy with his dog should just move to the next field. Well, let's just put that in the terms of this situation, which is there's a woman in a woman's locker room and two people with male genitalia walk in and she should just move over to the next room. That is the definite of misogyny right there. That is men dictating to women what they should do with their bodies and their rights in their safe spaces. School officials will never be the parents of my children. That email that was sent that Mr. Ford talked about is, um, I don't even know what the word is for it. Oh, it's, it's, it's disgusting, you're not my children's parents. If you think you are, you owe me a lot of money because they're expensive to raise. I think I should get all my tax dollars back. Lastly, I wanna talk about uh, school scores. This is from U.S. News 2022, uh, and I'm going to compare us to Lake Region High School. We are 39 out of 52 school districts in Vermont. We are 12,672 out of 17,843 school districts in the country. That puts our overall rating at 29% out of 100% in the country. Uh, we have uh, five students who have gotten a four or five on an AP exam, which is the the grades that schools will, will give you a buy on that, uh, on that study in college. Math at 21, reading at 48, and science at 33%. Lake Region, which is similar in size, is fifth out of 52 school districts in Vermont. 1,562 out of 17,843 school districts in the United States. That puts them at 91% out of 100% in the country. 
they have an AP of 28%, math of 47, reading of 73, and science of 49. I think you guys should ask them what they're doing right, because we're not doing what they're doing, obviously. Thank you for your comments. Go ahead. Take your name, Randolph Center. Excuse my nervous voice. <clears throat> As test scores show, our kids are not being taught very well. But I want to bring up what we are teaching them, how to adult. Are these kids being taught to be high-functioning adults and community members? Are we setting a good example of teaching them to problem solve, communicate, and compromise? Or just being right fighters, calling names, refu refusing open dialogue, and bullying? Lane Millington wrote me this week telling me that he holds parental rights to my children. Aside from the craziness of that, let's talk about what a parent's job is. We love them, protect them, we teach them, and guide them as parents. We are leaders. <clears throat> parents are leaders. A leader is what a, the superintendent is, or should be. A leader should direct everyone on the best path. They do not bully, intimidate, retaliate, or refuse to hear what everyone has to say. This is not a leader or a parent that I would want my children or anyone else's children led by. It is also the job of the school board. <clears throat> the school board should be doing. The board should be aware of what's going on in our schools and should be responsible for those who are leading our kids. Not, not taking action in complete silence is not leading and you are just as guilty of failing our kids in community. You should be able to put your own feelings aside and do what's best for everyone. Are you each personally confident in your own actions that you're doing the best you can to lead our children? Are you doing everything possible to solve these issues? Which one of you will stand up and say, enough is enough, I'm a leader, and I'm going to start working for everyone? <clears throat> you. Kevin Taylor. Peace, Randolph. Uh, I've been here my entire life. I went to the school. Uh, the worst part of this entire situation is it has become all about opinions. And we can argue with each other sitting here. We can argue with the people who don't agree with us on the internet. We can argue whose fault was whose, whatever else. What is totally being lost here is our kids have to go here. And we as parents expect a certain level of, number one, education to come out of here, which does come back to you folks. And I know that you take some offense hearing from us saying that sort of thing. And I get it. But this issue has caused divisiveness on, on both sides, and it was not necessary. The decisions that were made around the, the locker room stuff and everything else, we need to, we got, we got to get past that part of it. Nobody here is ever going to convince my side of the story to someone that disagrees with me. And we don't have to. There, you know, there's a butt for every seat, you know? We should all be able to come here and speak to each other like humans and not have to, to look at each other in the crowd and worry about retaliation or have an argument, a, 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 you know, a rebuttal of comments after a very heartfelt display of thought regarding the situation. We're all grown-ups here, you know? What, what kind of example are we setting? This has become nothing but he said, he said, she said. We're, we are not acting anymore like adults or like we would want our children to than the 14-year-olds involved in all of this. At some point, we're going to have to get past the wrong, what was done wrong now or then, and what we're going to do about it now. And, and I don't agree with trans individuals being mixed in with the locker rooms. And I see that you have laws and everything else to follow. But I do agree that it could have been handled different. 
And if maybe you guys said, yes, it could have been handled different, or reached out for uh, some comment on the situation and didn't paint the picture that people like us, what? Five, five seconds. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sorry. Okay. Do we have another person? Pop that online. <coughs> oh. I'm not sure if, I'm oh, sorry, I'm calling you Clo from Brookfield. Um, I'm not sure if this can work during the public comment, but just directing a question towards you. And I just ask if there's anything on the table or in the works that's like addressing the locker room situation. I would encourage you that you can call the central office okay. and they can fill you in on what's going on. Right. And if you're getting the community letter, the community emails, I believe some stuff went out with the community, the newsletters going out from the district. Okay, so we're going to move on um, in our agenda. <coughs> so next up is um, the, uh, we need to start thinking about the annual report, believe it or not. Um, and so uh, usually the board puts together a piece as well as um, Lane. And so I'm hoping that either we can have a group. So last year, uh, I believe it was Chelsea and I worked with Ben Merrill, who helps to write that up um, to sort of talk about what the board has been doing. Um, and then, uh, or we can talk now and just sort of brainstorm the things that we want to highlight in that annual report. So, do we want to make a little committee to work on it, or do we want to just brainstorm <coughs> now the things that we want to make sure get put into that report? Who writes that? Ben does. So Ben writes it. You were you yeah. worked on that committee, right? Last. So he writes it, but how does he? Get, is he here? It. No. He, <laughs> pardon? He's not here. So if we brainstorm tonight, he's not here to hear it. No, no, no. We would write it up and then we would give it to him. Usually, you authorize who who on your team is going right. right. to be the ones okay. kind of responsible to do do the work and then bring it back to the group. Yeah. Right. So do we have some folks that want to work on that? We can set up a meeting with Ben or anyone super sure, interested. Sure, I'll be on that committee. You'll do that again? Okay. Thanks, anyone else along with Chelsea? And I'll, I'll work with you on that. Um, no I'll other be on that committee too, Okay, I guess. and Sarah. Okay. Um, so. I'm going to need a motion to um, have Sarah, Chelsea, and I work as a committee to work with Ben to put together our annual report. So moved. So moved by Megan. Second. Uh, seconded by Hannah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So, and we'll just get together, we'll just email and set up a time. Okay. Um, so last year, didn't we get what Ben wrote the previous year so we could sort of uh, see? Yeah, what we that's about? in, I think, I don't know if. I got it because it's in the town reports. I can get it. Yeah, and, okay. and there are some around. Uh, like, I have one around somewhere. I'll get it to you. Um, but Linda can get it to us. Okay. So. That's done. Um, next up, we have uh, Heather is going to talk to us a little bit about um, 
Portrait of the Graduate. And remember, we're, we're going to be using the Portrait of a Graduate process to re-examine and look at, at our ends to sort of see where they can kind of fit into. And the Portrait of the Graduate is going to be work with the community to look at what are the outcomes that we want um, for, for the district, for a graduate of our schools um, to look like. So you have yes something to show Great, us. Sure. Perfect. Um, yes, uh, many uh, districts in the state of Vermont have adopted a portrait of a graduate. Um, the Vermont has a recommended portrait of a graduate. Um, this work should really look at the ends, outcomes, life skills, dispositions um, that we want every student to be able to uh, leave our, um, our educational system with. And so it really is a document that speaks to equity and um, academics and outcomes. And it should be created as a community document, ideally with many voices, including student voices, uh, families, uh, educators, uh, the board. And so this, um, I'm recommending that this would be um, uh, led by um, the superintendent or myself and would be a series of meetings where we would bring uh, community members together to look at some samples, talk about what we really want to see and ultimately create a beautiful document that captures this thinking and that can be uh, used as a vision um, to lead our um, uh, to lead everyone staying focused on these ends, staying focused on you know what do we want every graduate to achieve. Um, we did uh, apply for and were awarded a five thousand dollar mini grant uh, for this equity. Like to use some of those funds to. Um, support these, the creation of these events, possibly marketing materials to go out to community members to invite them in. Uh, we could also use some of the funds to provide refreshments or meals, uh, good things happen around food, uh, or other expenses that may be incurred, such as bringing in um, experts or consultants who may want to guide us in this work um, and give us some structure. So this has not been begun at all. This is really the first um, We've spoken about it very briefly at a previous board meeting, but at this point we have a little money, and I think we have a real purpose given what's been going on in the community, and I'd like to propose that we move forward to start some planning and inviting the community into this process. Um, and are you gonna, before you were talking about that you would um, possibly lead the charge, yeah. Um, and we had worked last spring with um, Jackie Wilson from uh, from south of here, um, and she had talked about doing that and would be willing to work with us as a consultant through the VSBA. She, um, I would very consults. much like to partner with the Vermont with School her. Board Association okay. and include Jackie Wilson in this project. Okay. So and um, so th that person could lead, um, help to lead. Yes, um, I think so. I think that's an excellent um, way to involve the okay. Vermont School Board Association. Okay, um, and. We had created an a ownership linkage group that was going to do Portrait of the Graduate. We tried for two months to get a committee mm -hmm. together, and it just mm -hmm. hasn't happened. Um, do, you, do we want to still have that committee work with? It's my recommendation that this Heather? is not a subcommittee yeah. of the board. Okay. That it, is a, that, it is. that it be more an initiative through you? Yes. Okay. And so we would not want to have a quorum, but we mm -hmm. would want school board members At to be involved. At least school board um, mm -hmm. representation. Yes. Um, and okay. ultimately, the final document would be presented for board approval. Okay. Okay. 
So that's a little bit. Or board approval that it happened, or board <coughs> approval for what? For spending the money. Well, what I'm thinking is, if we have a document that we are presenting as um, a vision for achieving our ends, that should be something that we are accepting into our practice in an official way. Okay. So, yes, for yeah. implementation. Okay. So, and the board, so this is where we struggle with our ownership <laughs> because the board is supposed to be reaching out to the community, which we could be doing with a few members helping out in this process. Um, because it's really looking at outcomes. What, what does a, a graduate of our system look like? And what does the community want? Well, we um, could do it as, 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 as board work, but then it's less collaborative, like talking back and forth with the community in, an, in, a, in a collaborative way. We see how we struggle with it during public comment Mm -hmm. Right. And so I, I want a meeting where we can have dialogue. Dialogue. Mm -hmm. Lots of dialogue and open conversation and collaboration and come to a, a sense of like, we can agree on this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we care about every child in our system and let's do our best for them and here's, here's our vision. Mm -hmm. So... I want okay. it to be board work and I want it to be... So I, maybe right, I need some right. help. It's a I need some help, maybe understanding what's the best way to accomplish this work. I would suggest, and I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but maybe we could have a conversation about that. That we have the administration do this piece of portrait of a graduate, and that we also have the committee that comes up with other ways to reach out to the committee reach out to the community for ownership linkage mm -hmm. because I think more is probably better than less and I worry that just doing this isn't going to put the board out in the community to be accessible mm -hmm. for conversation for dialogue for even as a board if we just stand there and listen to people like open comment even though we can't say well we think this and we think this and we think this at least we can listen and bring it back as an open comment yeah I may um, uh, I'm sure Jackie because Jackie's district she did it within her district and she um, they had sort of they had ends like we have end outcomes um, because my, what I'm hoping that we can do is as, and maybe it's more of a collaboration between the board once you've done some collaboration, maybe the board can sort of come, once we sort of know what you're doing, we can come in to sort of look at, okay, here's the portrait of the graduate, where are our ends, and because those the, the ends that we have probably will fit into what comes out in the portrait of the graduate. And there may be some things that we add in. So right well, now, if you look- It may or may not. I mean, it, it may be that they lead us to really reconsider our ends. I mean, right, that's kind of right. the point, and right? In collaboration sort of is maybe changing direction. I, I agree with Chelsea that we shouldn't piggyback on this mm -hmm. as the way to get work done that we should be doing okay. anyway. I think these are two completely separate, um, and, and representation in, in the portrait of the graduate process from the board is important as, mm -hmm. as one of the players and, and leaders and um, with the community, but it's not for us. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So we have work to do on our ownership linkage plan. This mm -hmm. might teach us a lot and, and give us direction on how to do that, but this isn't 
this isn't our work. Okay. For that yep. purpose. So that brings me back to then, she's gonna run with the portrait of the graduate. <laughs> we as a board need to look again at okay we had started the you know back in september we need to have a plan for what we want to do in terms of reaching out to the community and we we haven't done it yet <laughs> we need to make that plan how do we want to go about doing that and the same way we wanted to two months ago but we haven't met yet. We need to meet. Okay. I mean, it, it although that that committee was around <clears throat> portrait of the graduate, so now we'll we'll just reverse it. Yeah, because that was what we were going to be doing. Who's on that committee? I am. I am. Got to Hannah. Yes. Oh, we had Scott on there too. Oh, right. Scott was on there too. Yeah. Only only caution to throw out there is that the the focus and the purpose of the portrait of the graduate exercise is to develop new ends. Right, that's right, and that's right. Well, that's one of the hesitations has been, you know, touching those old ends that I, I don't even remember what the date was, 2016. 2016, yeah. Um, but uh, that if it would be unfair to engage in the process and not see it through so that if, you know, things change, they change. Mm -hmm. um, and so that would be the one, because I think that was kind of what, what killed a little bit of the Winston process, which was which was a pretty good process that he ran, but we kind of got to the end, and he was, was delving more into means than ends. Right. But I would just, I would think the board, if you're going to, you know, have us engage in it, which I think it's a really good process, just recognize that it, its purpose is to develop goals and ends. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So does it, does it delve into the means as well? Because we no. don't want to be in means, we want to be in ends, but no, it's primarily but ends, that's our work. I'm just bringing it up because the board has been reluctant to touch the old end statements for years, just from my experience on the board. That's so the just whole point. That's the right. whole point of the board. Right. So for as long as folks are comfortable that as that work happens, as it gets, gets developed, that at some point in time, you know, <clears throat> part of it is it, it does go out once it's kind of in a draft form or close to a final draft, you know, the community votes on it, right? You get some feedback on it to see if it's acceptable. See, that's where I'm trying to figure out how we can't, why we can't work as a collaborative team to come up with the portrait of the graduate and sort of in that process pull up our ends and see which ones the community is like nah this one isn't really because it sort of fits with that portrait of the graduate if, big big picture outcome picture if what ends up happening because we having done this process before if the values of the community really support your ends they should never have to look at the ends. They're going to come up with something similar anyway through this process. Um, and so I would be cautious about, you know, it, people should be aware of what the, what the current ends are. But if the values of the community is really still looking at those things and thinking they're important, that's what's going to come out of the process all on its own. And I wouldn't want to shade the process ahead of times with an expectation that, yeah, we want to get back to where we started from. If, if I'm making sense. You're not making sense. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not following. So you it, mean by bringing up the ends? Bringing, and, up, and bringing up the old, yeah. In, in most districts, um, you know, Swampscott was a perfect example. Um, we went out, we did the picture of the graduate, and it was pretty close to the mission statement. And that was actually a, a, the original mission statement that they had, and that was satisfying because it meant that their values were still in the same place. Mm -hmm. But they didn't start by reviewing the old mission statement and what it I said. What they were starting saying. unadulterated and right. with clear let's, eyes. Let's and, start. Okay. Yeah. So Sorry you're saying that. your your recommendation would be fresh start. Let's look at where portrait want, of the graduate. Where do let's we want get people students, to be after 12 years? Let's get yeah. parents. Let's get community members, experts, and and do that portrait of a graduate. Yeah, fresh eyes. Fresh eyes, and then the board can then look at that. Maybe then, then the next step is the board then looks at that result, and and then and then adapts our current ends to that portrait of a graduate. Yeah, because you don't want to disenfranchise the work that the community did. Right. 
What do folks think about that? How does that sound for a process? And then we would have some board members, maybe um, because we can't have a quorum showing up doing things, but maybe um, helping facilitate the different groups. Right. We can have you know a couple of board members, maybe one period of time, and then it's a couple of board members another period of time helping out in that process. Um, and this is a good time to do it. We've been through a cycle of controversies. Um, and so where people are in terms of their thinking about what's important has probably changed. And so it's probably a good good timing. You know, don't, don't, waste a, don't waste a crisis. We're in a crisis. People are thinking about things in detail. So this would be a good time to have those conversations. <clears throat> so, Heather, yes. um, at the VSBA conference, um, did, have you contacted the Up With Learning people? So that's another facilitation group. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did, did you yep. find out, are they reasonably priced? Is that well, a group that you're <laughs> considering? or? Uh, Currently, their website is down. <laughs> okay. um, we have been, uh, and we're also interested in connecting with, with them on another another topic as well about creating like student leadership. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, the, and so right. we do want students involved in this. Mm -hmm. um, I do think they will be a, a partner with us, but I have had um, difficulty getting in touch with them. Okay, I'm not quite sure what's going on. All right. So next steps for the board. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so you're going to be moving. You're going to be moving forward on getting things organized from your perspective. I'm, I guess I'm trying to figure out how the board. So the board will just wait until we hear from you in terms of. How about a vote of support if you want to move forward with this process? Okay. Because that way you're speaking to us with a unified voice. Okay. Doesn't it doesn't you know it's not like it, but it's just a vote of support we support the process get the work on it okay and and board members then as they move through that process and we're working with them when they get the final product we'll do that but in addition am I hearing still that we want to have an ownership linkage committee still meet and talk about other ways that the board might be reaching out to the community? Well, we still need a plan. Right? I, think that, I, think that's yeah. a, I think that's a good idea. I think this is kind of an event, right? right. But there should be an ongoing, like plan. An ongoing plan. It is okay. a series of events, just from my experience. I've run this okay. before in another school district, and it is a series of conversations. And um, then we also need, this is a great opportunity for linkage. We have to go out to communities, into local places, to be close to home, to invite people in, to talk about where we are in the process. Um, so you, we want to have people who are committed to working on it all the way through. Very right, simple. but it hasn't yeah, That's what I'm right. an event. Is it like it's yes. a process? Yes. With, with things that happen, but it's like a thing, and then it's done, and there's a product. Yeah. Yes. But as the, but the board needs to have kind of an ongoing. I see. Regular. Linkage. Engagement yeah. plan. Uh, mm -hmm. as part of this can be part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, but this is not enduring. No, it, it, you you end up with an end statement right. or you know what used to be called the mission statement at the end that then kind of drives things. But as far as your linkage plan is, that might be a good focus for having a facilitator come in for the board's PD for the year mm -hmm. uh, to try to okay, what is, get the linkage plan set up and actually have one that's created by the end of that facilitated process so that you can walk away knowing exactly what the board is going to be working on and doing. Right, and I had emailed Jackie about working with us on that and she said she would be willing but we hadn't gotten together yet as the linkage committee to and in a way this could be a long-term linkage plan because it should be a living document mm -hmm. that is that it was sort of at least the conversation is renewed every year is this still our document does it right. need to be tweaked what do we need to do to remind teachers that this is our document, to remind the community that this is our document? 
And so it, it shouldn't be a stagnant, like, okay, we're done with that, and it's, it's to bed. Because as technology changes and as, you know, community needs change, it should be reviewed at least annually. Three, yeah. yeah, and that's what's three, three supposed year. to be happening yeah. with our ends as well, which mm -hmm. is the piece that the board hasn't figured out how to do. We sort of created those ends mm -hmm. back in 2016, and then we, we didn't, or, or maybe even earlier than that, but we haven't really revisited them. Um, but they were so general that it seemed to work. Um, yeah, they just made it difficult to really hone down. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, okay. So uh, so I need I I will say um, can we have um, do we have a motion to? To, well, I don't even know. I mean, if you want to go ahead and start the process, I don't think you need a motion from the board to do that. Sure, why not? But we could give you one. Or yeah, could, but remember, unless the board speaks as a whole to us, we don't have to follow through. Okay. We plan. So, on, we, we plan, on, and one of the reasons okay. I'm holding, I'm, I'm trying to hold you no, to this I without, like, I like without that. saying no? it, is because I want to make sure that when we get to an end process, that it's used for something. Right. Because part of that approval is, yeah, we're running with this process because if we go through this, we pull the community together to have this discussion so we don't disenfranchise people. Mm -hmm. We're committing that we will see this through. That's that's okay. the real goal behind it, Okay. if that makes sense. So I need a motion from the board to um, direct the administration, the superintendents, to um, start the process of creating a portrait of a graduate with the community, students, parents, and faculty. Right. I have one more question before sure. we make the motion. What is the timeline of this? I've done it in two, two, two weeks to do the focus sessions. And then depending upon how complicated the information you get back from those groups, you need a team to get together and try to distill it down. You know, you have, have different groups that are saying what's important. Um, a lot of it might be related to each other, but you need some really good wordsmiths to be able to kind of concentrate it down into a couple of basic statements. And that takes a little bit of time. Um, so like this I think year? we... I think it, I could say I would say plus being able to go out to the community once we've got those basic statements and seeing if they're in agreement, you know, whether they hit the mark and getting the support from the community, I would say three months is reasonable. I'd like a little bit longer because if we you sometimes people get stuck on a word or a phrase and it takes time to get unstuck. So it takes a series of like brainstorming efforts. Like if, if, if some people want a certain word and someone want another word, I don't know how else to explain it. So say, <laughs> like your, say yours end. Sometimes it needs a whole nother meaning <laughs> to so get like Implementation to, maybe for next year? Yes, I think that we could do it in six months, but three for this community, given the what's going on and the division, there could be some stuck points that may take some time and compassion and discussion to work through. So I think three months is a very tight timeline. Yeah, I would put that. And it's not to be critical, just to be realistic. So yeah, I would like till the end of the, the school year. And implement yeah. means putting it into place. I'd love to have it so in place in the classroom. So classroom. if you're saying actually putting into place the ends that are derived from it, that would come about most likely you know, if this is done by the end of the year, we take it into account during next year's budget cycle. In case there's budgetary impacts, which there almost always are, that's the main tool by which we do our work. Um, you know, it'll, it, it's a process. Um, it may take a couple of years to get stuff really up and running where we want it to go, depending upon what people are coming up with. Right. So it just we have to first see what the goals are that people want folks to achieve. But the actual process and getting to an end statement three months or the end of the year, you know, that's... So we can present it out to the community at the end of the year, possibly. 
would love to. Yeah. yeah. That's the that good, good way to kick off a new year and to kick off a new bu budget <coughs> planning season. And the state has a lot of resources, so they've already created a generic one mm -hmm. that they want districts. So the state is behind all school districts coming up with a portrait of a graduate mm -hmm. because they want boards to be focusing on outcomes. What do you want? And then to tweak it to your individual community as a district. Mm -hmm. So um, so we ha I mean, we'll have one to start. Suppose they also have created a new graphic, but I haven't seen it yet. But um, and remember, we looked at this earlier in the year mm -hmm. um, to just sort of look at it. And I remember when I was looking at it, I did notice that many of our ends that we already have kind of fit under many of these things that are um, in the portrait of a graduate. So I. As Lane said, I think we're going to find that unless things have changed dramatically within our community, it's going to line up fairly um, well, I think, with um, sort of where our community was before. But um, I mean, there may be some changes or some other priorities that are a stronger priority for the community as a whole. Um, so. Okay, so do we have a motion to direct the administration to start the portrait of a graduate process? So moved. I second. Okay, moved by him, seconded by Sarah. Okay, all any discussion, any more discussion, any other questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so we can get that started. Did I already give you Jackie's information, contact information? She, you might want to just check in with her. Um, I can. I, I will email with you about that. Okay. Uh, so moving along. Um, <clears throat> So we're not quite out of, so we did the portrait of the graduate. So back to ownership linkage committee. We're not, not going to let us off the hook. Um, Katja, you were the chair of that committee. Can we get that committee to, to um, meet? Trying to, trying to spearhead us. Yeah, oh, okay. scheduling. All right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, do you want to try and try to send out a doodle poll again? Okay. So we'll okay. try and get what that one. Now on that, you're on it with me, and I'm on it, and I, and Scott. You said Scott was on it. Right. So and then did you join Trudy because Post? Scott? Oh, did I join? Was that what oh, I joined last night? Oh, yeah, I yeah. I joined something. I don't remember. Megan joined. <laughs> Just Lynn will have it in the minutes. It's, yeah, I, I think that was right. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure I saw it in the minutes. Yeah. So it's Megan, Hannah, me. So it's four. And committee meetings now. So I, I, I got um, clarification from the VSBA lawyer that all commit in open meeting law committees committees of the board also have to be warned so when a committee meets we have to warn that so um, that's work for Linda so we need to just um, be aware of that and, and then we have to do um, 48 hours um, beforehand uh, before we meet um, and I believe in our binders I put in the directions for that so um, we can go over that when we look at the binders because I can't remember that's why I put all that information in uh, under our rules of procedures just because there are all these little um, details that we need to remember so um, we can reference that Okay, so we've got a we've got a doodle poll going out, and hopefully that group can also um, meet and just start 
sort of thinking about ownership linkage other than the portrait of graduate part of our linkage. Okay, next up is our complaint procedure. Um, so Sean um, met with me, remember last board meeting you um, uh, directed me to meet with a lawyer to go over that and I emailed it out to everyone and I didn't bring a copy it's of it. A, I think it's in a pile of handouts somewhere. Yeah. It's not the one that's in our. It's not the one in. Okay. in like, no, oh, so it was. Yeah, Megan's got them all. Oh, you got them all. Okay. Did I, give you guys, did I give you guys that? No, you got them all. <laughs> I have it already. Yeah, I thought I gave oh. everyone some. No, I have okay. it. Okay. So the yeah, one, in the, the one in your packet is the old oh, one. Okay. And then Sean went over oh, this one. And. Um, so it's it's the newer version. It's not really pretty. We can make it pretty, but it's not. It's just so that you know it's based the basic format. This is the email. Okay, so this is the old one. No, this, no is the this is the new one. The one in your packet is the old one. Okay. They're, they're the same. They're sort of the same, but you'll notice um, in the new one, there's a little blurb at the beginning. Um, so he looked at what the VSBA, so VSBA is Vermont School Boards Association, um, what they like to see in this procedure. So it's just sort of acknowledging uh, people in the beginning and then it goes through basically the first five steps which were very similar to our own. Um, and then um, you'll notice in step five, he, he made the clarification that it's, um, because remember what we were looking at was that when people came with a complaint, they thought we were gonna rehash all the facts. Mm -hmm. um, and really the board's role is not to do that. The board's role is to look at policy and procedures and to make sure that they were um, done fairly and consistently and, um, and that they were followed, that policies were followed. So. Um, that's what he changed in the language if you if you're looking there um, so and then uh, so so that you'll notice in step five looks very different from because then I, I think in our step five it just keeps talking about the issue which was sort of unclear um, and then uh, oh, and then he put in some legalese uh, in, where is that, in the standard of, well, where did he put in, like, he says the standard of review, which is sort of, it's legal language, but it, he said that was the language you wanted to say. Where did he say? Second fourth line up under step five. Step five in the, in the second part, the right? Part. Oh, in the first part. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what you were referring to. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it, right. So it's saying, the, yeah, and that's just lets people know that um, what we're using for the review. On the a review on the record and the standard of review shall be whether the superintendent's decisions regarding the complaint constitutes an abuse of discretion. He said that was the language to use. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, so uh, does as people look at it and hopefully people read it before before this meeting, are people comfortable with the changes? It's better than it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, my only, the only thing that I'm still seeing potentially that might be helpful um, mm -hmm. is on now step seven, um, previously step 10. Um, 
I don't, and I don't know if there's, if it's worth like repeating some of the previous language when it says the board makes a decision, board decisions are final, board sends, but makes a decision, because we're making a decision on the standard of review, right? Isn't that what we're? Were the, were the procedures followed? With the procedures were followed. Was, was we're not making a decision given, on. Given the information that was available. So I don't know if it's. So do you want to add? Well, I, I mean, that was kind of one of the questions we had for our lawyer was, that just to help clarify that the board is not making a decision on the actual case, but whether the procedure was followed properly to come to the to, to come to the decision. So I just feel like that's some information that potentially like reiterating that at the because okay. the board makes a decision. Yes, we're making a decision, but not a decision on. Whether and what the facts right of the wrong. case. Yeah, we're you're, making you're, a decision on whether the policy, yeah. And, yeah. the policy and procedure right. was followed appropriately. So, so I, I just feel like that it might be helpful to have some sort of mm -hmm. language in step seven that just reiterates that, that what that. we are actually mm -hmm. making a decision on. So, do you have do you have some wording that you? I am not a lawyer, unfortunately. <laughs> Okay. Um, you need but I wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> um, I mean, I think that that was so, a I question see that we just asked that. Sean again and say, okay. you know, in step five, this is some of the language that you used. How can we reiterate that? Okay. So how can you reiterate. state it in a way yeah. that a layperson is going to understand what yeah. it means? Um, that. Okay. Uh, so can I, I will need um, a motion for me to contact Sean again and just have him are, are people in in agreement? Yeah, that, I mean, this is still, yeah. Gotcha. I think that it, that wording can be confusing to people about mm -hmm. what it is we do as a board right. with our decisions. I mean, I think it's very nicely said in step five, the board shall conduct a review on the record and standard of review. Um, but okay. I think reiterating that at the end, as that is what the decision that we are okay. concluding. All right. So, um, are there any other things that board members see in here that feel they feel like we need to um, address, or or is that the only? I know. Well, that's why I was looking for that standard of review, but it was only in step five. It's not in step seven. So I think I think reiterating that would be okay and more clear. So um, I need a motion for the board to direct me to go back to Sean to have him help me word Smith. So moved. Okay. Second. Seconded by Sarah. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, so I will do that. Thank you very much. All right, next up, we have our lovely binders um, that Linda put together um, for us. So missing from the binder is our complaint procedure because it's not finalized yet. Um, and um, so, and was there, what else did I leave off? I didn't have you put in. It was just the. It's just that one. I just think. that. Okay. So um, I just want to go through the binder. So you'll notice um, in the beginning, it's just all the meeting dates and where the meetings will be held and the time. Can I ask a very quick question? Sure. Clear um, our personal emails are the, we only, as far as um, community contact, only our board emails are provided. Not given. Right. Okay, thank you. Right. You'll notice I don't even give those lists as a public okay. list. Okay. That was my question. Meeting. Thank you. Okay. I can take them off if you want. Yeah. Right. Um, and then, so that this is just a listing. So next up is a listing of all the board members and contact information. Um, when your term is up, just because sometimes you can forget that. There's some basic information on the second page. Um, just, you know, 
folks in the district, um, how um, uh, agenda and, dis and distribution, where the warnings are put so that um, you're aware of that in case somebody asks you. All of the committee responsibilities, those are sort of our standing committees, not the, the small committees like the um, ownership linkage. And then um, we have what, what uh, Chelsea and I were calling our orientation document that basically just welcome to the board. This is typically the time commitment. Um, uh, board makeup and duties. So they're just the responsibilities um, of the chair, of being a board person in general, the vice chair, and the board secretary. Um, there's uh, just sort of the main key points of policy governance. And that came from the, the um, uh, Vermont School Board Association website. And then there's just, uh, there's a link to, and it's, you'd have to type it all in, um, but there's a link to just the VSBA's, um, it's a short video of just sort of what it really means to be a board member. Um, and then, uh, then rules and procedures, which you all hopefully had time. You had time, I believe, last time. I sent it out to you a while ago. There were a few things that I needed to go over with Sean, um, just to make sure they were all set. Um, so again, in here, it just goes over sort of how our meetings operate. So if we have questions, um, and you'll notice um, it, it uh, gives you information on um, warnings and when the different uh, warnings need to be done, what to do with minutes, although we're not really doing that, but Linda, Linda is doing it, but if we have questions, um, it helps us just know that information. And then you'll notice uh, letter F in that is about committees. So this is that information about um, committees. And um, this is where the chair, I, we put in the chair of the committee will run the meeting, be responsible for set, setting the agenda and providing the OSUD clerk with the necessary information to warn the meeting. Um, so that's just an extra duty now when we have committees because we need to make sure that those get warned. Um, does everybody see where that is in the, Hannah, you're looking confused. Um, Did you find it? No, I did. Quite honestly, I, um, I was doing the alphabet in my head because in here, oh, G comes before F. So oh, I, dear. I was That's probably singing me. to myself. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. So that should be H. Very good. Nobody caught that before I had poor Linda. Print it all out. So you just gotta it. fix just it by it. hand. Um, uh, so, so that's an addition, and that's from uh, what I learned from the Vermont School Boards Association and talking with uh, the lawyer from there. Um, uh, and then um, public comment, the last time we talked about emails coming into the board, um, the board decided they wanted me to be responsible for responding to those comments. Um, when I checked in with legal counsel, that was why I couldn't finalize this document because I needed to talk with them. They did not suggest that I copy the board um, on those emails just because of the open meeting and laws and the possibility that somebody <laughs> might reply all or reply back 
and and then it, it just causes a problem. Mm -hmm. um, so the education part is just you know because um, that was it, it was more a communication and uh, I could probably just let people would it be helpful you, for people to know that yes. I responded if you could just fire off an email that says this person has been responded to just okay because then then you're not sitting there wondering exactly. I agree has, has yeah. when did she and sometimes if I'm busy it might take me a couple of days before I respond to someone and sometimes if you get in an, an an email from someone you're gonna then forward it is that I mean that's sort of what we said is we were gonna forward it to me as the chair that's what we're all doing right mm -hmm. yeah that's respond. what we're all doing so that's fine okay okay are and we then, still like not supposed to be opening these one like I, I are you getting nasty ones um I haven't really gotten nasty ones but okay just yeah, ones that are it. obviously from um, fake accounts like mm -hmm. the you know like the names are odd like one of them is get shorty <laughs> I don't know did you guys get that or no I don't remember okay I, I know I think, think so that. okay I will forward that one then okay um I'm not opening them because are I know it was that it discussed be. that anything odd not to open yeah back with oh. our virus the hackers yeah because that's one of the ways they, oh, they send oh. spoofed emails and when you open it up right especially it's if there's got a link something in it. yeah that's yeah, how the, they get you a, a so, link is where the the uh, as far as i understand it where the danger would be not okay opening the actual email I think okay. my uh, kind of rule about it is if I am the only name that's in the two section, that one needs to be forwarded. Mm -hmm. But so often they're, you know, all of us. Right. Yeah. yeah. But open, I, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I, if they've sent something to us, that line of communication is there whether we, whether we open it or not. It's about clicking a link okay. once you have it open. Yeah. And if I'm wrong about that, man, oh, man, I must have been <laughs> You've affected many, the entire many times. So, uh, yeah. Uh, probably worth asking. Um, maybe you all check in with mm -hmm. Tina and just. Okay. The only other danger, I think, is if there's a picture and you have pictures automatically to download into when you open an email, the picture can have a tracer. And can um, and so you should set your email to not download pictures unless you say I'll take the picture. Just an yeah. extra safety measure. Yeah. Okay, we have the Chromebooks, so even with the Chromebooks, they need to be set like that. I would. Okay. Is that the only place Google? people are opening it's just, emails? You, no. I no. it, it's I've opened my email on my yeah, phone. Exactly. If you exactly. get a photograph, it, exactly. I, you, the Chromebooks it doesn't aren't have the only place where you can send it. Right, so it has right. Yeah, you can look at your email. So it knows mm -hmm. if you opened it or not. Let me talk to Tina. <laughs> Just make sure yeah. if it's a if it's a strange okay. email address because I'm just thinking of right. The, I just didn't know if like we the IT training that I just a, went through said if it. Even the email, the email is weird. You gotta be careful that I don't remember exactly. I, yeah. I think a lot exactly of that, at least it. at this point, is past. Um, okay. I would still be cautious of links within an email, especially if it's from somebody you don't know. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, just in general. Okay. So generally, the emails are gonna come to me. I'll respond. I will let people know that I've responded, but I won't send the content of the response back. Um, same with, um, so in person, so you get somebody comes up to you at the grocery store, um, you know, again, it tells you the procedure. So if it's an operational question, you know, if you don't know, you can send them to Lane. If you know, you know, it's uh, the principal of the school or um, 
uh, I don't remember the name of the bus guy. <laughs> Bellavance, yeah. right? If it's a, you know, sometimes it's a school bus thing, um, you can you can direct them, and you can direct them to the complaint procedure. So um, hopefully people will will be um, doing that. Um, Right, right, right. And it's important for us to, you know, help people um, know where to to go to get information or if they have a question or an issue, you know, ask Lane or, you know, go to the athletic director or go to the to your child's teacher and sort of go through that process. So that's just more of just helping the community know how to um, get their questions answered. Uh, so that's that information. And then um, we do have, the district has, um, this is one of the required policies, so I just put that in there too um, for, for us to um, know. It's just some general information about um, participation at board meetings. And then I put the, the general public comment preamble here in case I get sick and I'm not here. Maybe Katya's not here, somebody has this. Our, our process is gonna be each time before public comment, somebody's gonna read that um, preamble just to make sure that people understand what our procedures are. Um, I had to change it up again and that was um, Pietro and Sean didn't, they wanted me to keep it short and sweet and not do that. If there's a large group and we have a sign in and then we're gonna divide the time between, he was, they were both like, nah, <laughs> just keep it to this and, and work with it. So that's why that was taken out. And then um, the final bit of your um, binder, all of our policy governance policies. So these are our board policies. This is what tells us um, pretty specifically um, what we need to be doing and what we need to be looking at in terms of the limitations on the administration, the outcomes. So our ends, again, you can see they're very, um, they're not, they're pretty comprehensive, but they're not very specific. Um, and uh, then the last section is um, the open meeting law information from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and that's just a reference item for everyone just because it's helpful, it's got a lot of information, and it's hard to remember this stuff from month to month. Um, so it's there so that if we're not sure, we can pause for a minute and, and look it up. And it's got a lot of the usual questions that we might have. Okay, and then we will be adding, once I, I wordsmith this complaint procedure with, with um, Sean, um, we'll add that in there too, so you'll have that as well. Not sure where I'll have you put that in. Put it in the list, um, I think it was right before the policies. Yeah. And you'll see two pieces of green paper. So okay. we were gonna put it in. I was in gonna between put it in those between two. It, okay, perfect. Yeah, I think that will be this. good, because that will come <coughs> right after the rules and procedures. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Excellent. Or after the preamble. Yeah. There we go. And I can get tabs. I just didn't. Have yeah, no, I think the green paper, green paper is the green paper fine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we Thank need you tabs. for putting this together. Thank you for, together. yes, this is fabulous. Mm -hmm. And we have a nice picture of kids on the front. <laughs> awesome. Okay, um, so there's that. Um, and how are we doing for time? Pretty good. Okay, so um, 
Next up, we have uh, the treatment of students, parents, guardians, and community. 2.1 um, EL report from Lane that need, we need to decide if we want to accept. And 2.2 uh, treatment of staff. Um, These are just first readings, right? No, this is the uh, final, yeah. the second reading. Um, and remember, this is looking back to last year, um, and what you're, what we're focusing on is, is his interpretation reasonable, and uh, is his does his rationale make sense, and the evidence that he provides is it sufficient enough to um, back uh, the uh, interpretation that he put forth okay so with um treatment of students parents guardians and community um are, are there any questions or any concerns in regard to um the reasonableness of the interpretation the rationale for it and the evidence given. And then also remember there is an evidence binder um, mm -hmm. as evidence that is in it related to this. So that that would mean, you know, like, uh, oh, I guess it's in the other one. You know, like he, he doesn't put in here, he, you reference student handbooks in here, right? But he's not. But he isn't like, you know. We don't have a student handbook here to look at. But he's referenced it in uh, provision to, four. If you go to the binder, it's there. Or you right. know, sometimes there's a link so that you can look it up and that sort of thing. Right. Um, and Lane, there was just one typo under provision four, last paragraph. Uh, your board is missing an A. So are there any... Um, I see it. It's in the center yeah. of the paragraph. Any... Are, is the board ready to accept this feeling that the interpretation is reasonable? You had a month to take a look at it. evidence sufficient to support the document. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept? I can do it. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll uh, make a motion to accept 2.1 and 2.2 as we're in. Okay. Can you do both of them? Yeah. I second. Seconded by Sarah. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So moving on, we have a second reading of um, this is a recommended policy from the auditor, correct? Yeah, it, it, it makes sense. This is um, prevention of conflict of interest. So in other words, mm -hmm. you know, we shouldn't be signing into contracts if it's my brother and I'm the one who's signing the contract on behalf. Um, things like that. So it's that sort of conflict of interest. It's also making sure that folks aren't accepting gifts more than $125. Um, it doesn't usually happen, and it's more a private business thing, but mm -hmm. um, those sorts of things. Okay, so are there any questions regarding this policy? We looked at it last time. We know why, Lane. Um, feeling like it should be in there. We've had a recommendation from the auditor to put it in there. Um, do I have a motion to accept? I make a motion to approve the prevention of conflict of interest policy. policy. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Oh, seconded by Hannah. Hannah. <laughs> okay, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Keep on forgetting to do that, but well, I guess when it's when it's unanimous, we're good. 
Okay. Um, Lane, we were going to have you. you. We're still struggling. He's struggling to get um, some of the information that he's needed to report. So again, this is a report on our ends from last year. So the... Uh, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what's happening at the AOE. Um, what we talked about kind of at the pre-board planning meeting as well was this idea that, you know, the information is dense, so maybe we break it up over several board meetings, you know, what's available as it's becoming available so that people can ask kind of deeper questions about things um, along the way and hopefully makes a little, little bit of sense. Um, let me get this going here. on this so uh, the goal would be that as data becomes available if it becomes available we can try to start to talk about um, the different ends statements that we have and start to try to put some data um, that's associated with it together so that people can see it but one of the biggest problems that we have um, is this idea that most of, especially the foundational knowledge ends, were reliant on comparisons to state testing. This is how the district is doing. This is how the state is doing. If we're within a certain percentage of the state or if we're approaching where the state is, since this district was starting out at a very low point, um, you know, that would mean that we are in compliance. Um, the problem right now is the state has not released state data from the last round of testing. Uh, there is data that they haven't released from previous rounds of testing as well, going back as far as three years. We've been able to hack stuff together, but we can't do it because they just don't have enough this year. Um, so I've been trying to devise some kind of workarounds to talk a little bit about this. The other thing that I noticed that was recent, um, just so folks are aware, is the state has changed its website out of the blue. None of us knew about it. I logged in about a week ago to start looking at some older SBAC data there um, to try to try to get some of that information and it does not exist on the website at this point in time. They have demographic data, you know, if we want to know how many kids were in school, you know, and what grades, they have that sort of information but not the SBAC. I think that what is going on is that they are getting in things prepared uh, for the transition, remembering that last fall was the end of SBAC. And just recently, last in October, they announced that they were moving on to a new testing system called Cognia. And so some of this may be preparing for that, but I'm just hoping that we get to see that data at some point in time. Um, context is important as we talk about the data that I'm going to show you in a little bit. And again, we're going to do hopefully maybe a 15 or a 20 minute little presentation over the next three or four board meetings with what we can kind of piece together. Um, but for context, remember that 2019, 18, 19 was the last normal year prior to COVID. That's important when we look at this data. Um, 2020, there was no state testing. That was the year that COVID hit in March. And then um, everybody was rushing around to get everybody out into remote session um, as, as soon as possible after that announcement came up. And they did not do the SBAC that year. Um, 2021, um, that was the year that we were either remote for the first half and then sometime after December, October, as we got towards spring, um, we switched into hybrid mode. Um, and then uh, 2022, which was last year, uh, right, spring of 2022 is when they do the testing. That year was in person, um, but we had all the disruptions that were due to COVID. Uh, surges that were happening within the school, right? We had the COVID snow days, some schools had more than others, um, but we also had this kind of rotating um, nonsense that was going on where, because of what the quarantine requirements were at the time, if we had a kid in the class, the whole class would have to be shut down for the quarantine period. So just an incredible amount of disruption over the course of three years that folks should be um, worried about. So to be able to talk a little bit about what I was able to piece together since I don't have the state SBAC data, um, the state level SBAC data, um, we have to understand a little bit about absolute data versus trend data. Um, absolute data is data that's valid without being compared to anything else, right? And these actual numbers from us in 2022, 72% of OSSD fourth graders, right, hit the mathematics proficiency threshold which was a 45% per point increase over their third grade scores the year before. 
So actual data stands on its own, it makes sense. Another example, right in 2022, 54% of OSSD ninth graders achieved ELA proficiency in 2022, which was a 19 percentage point increase over their seventh grade scores. Trend data, on the other hand, is a little bit different, right? You see the trend line in there. Um, trend data is useful for showing change over time. It can show if things are growing or if they're declining. Um, but in terms of absolute value, it's not as strong. Um, what this particular graph represents is the district's overall en enrollment, not including our preschools. Our preschools have been growing. Um, and the graph is pretty chaotic. Um, and you can see that by how much the data points jump around. And one of the other nice things about trend data is that if you've got good trend data, you can use it to kind of predict what's going to happen in the future. Um, and depending upon how good it is, is how far out you can predict that things are going to continue in the same, same way. What makes predictability easy is you see how all these data points are jumping around and we've got our linear regression line in here, um, which is actually pretty stable at this point in time, um, is the fact that these data points are very far from that line. When the data points are very close to the trend line, you can have a lot of confidence that what you see happening in, in terms of the line and what it implies is going to continue for some time into the future. When it's scattered all over the place, your guess is as good as mine what next year is going to bring. And that's kind of what the data is showing you, right? Every year, our enrollments are jumping up and down and depending upon, upon what, where, and when. So uh, based on this trend line, it actually is pretty stable. Um, this is the total district enrollment. And so what you're seeing here is that you got this negative 0.7. So on average, we're losing 7 tenths of a kid per year as each year goes, goes by based upon this data right here, right now. Um, prior to this drop, we were actually increasing between 5 to 9 kids per year based upon the trend lines. So again, trend data versus absolute data. Um, Again, can't really predict too much about the next year um, just because it's jumping all around all over the place. The, the pattern there, though, suggests is you're going to see another jump back up. Um, why is it this chaotic? There's really kind of two major factors, uh, I think, that were going on. The first, obviously, was COVID. Um, we went through bouts of fear uh, with both staff and students where everybody would rush out and homeschool because they didn't want to be in, in the district when COVID was running very strong. And then when things seemed like it was better, they'd come back and then they'd go back into homeschooling. Um, we also have quite a bit of divisiveness, as some folks talked about earlier today, that's been happening in the district that started way back with the school mascot, and then it was Black Lives Matter, and then it was the same sort of threats and intimidation when it came to masking. And then the fact that the district was publicly recommending that students get vaccinations. And so that heated rhetoric has caused some folks to pack up their bags and leave the district at this point in time. Um, so that is legitimate. Some are homeschooling, um, but I think some folks have actually packed their bags and left. Um, all right, let's see if we can kind of put this together. So since I don't have S back, what we're going to talk about is the, the NAEP assessment. Um, and that's the National Assessment of Educational Progress. The students take it every other year. Um, and it is very similar in terms of SBAC, right? It focuses in on math and ELA skills. And while it's not easy to do like a, an absolute comparison, and by that I mean, okay, if, if I've got a group of kids uh, and 47% of them hit the proficiency threshold in SBAC, that doesn't necessarily mean that 47% of them are going to hit the, the proficiency threshold in NAEP. Right? They might, but I can't really compare too strongly. There's not a really strong correlation there between um, absolute terms, but what we can look at is we can look at what's happening in terms of trends. Because if the NAEP data is doing this, which it is, that means that student performance overall uh, in the state of Vermont and across the nation is going down. And if ours is doing the same thing, well, that kind of would make sense. If ours is going in the opposite direction, that tells us something, right? Whatever impact was happening um, to all the rest of the world, if our data was going up at the same time, 
that theirs was going down pretty significantly, then we must have been doing something different um, than, than what was happening either in the state or in the nation. Does that make a little bit of sense? And, and stop me and, 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 and ask questions if, if you need them kind of along the way. Um, what the NAEP focuses on is it focuses specifically on fourth and eighth grade. So it's not like SBAC where you can look at, you know, from grades three to nine. Um, it's two very specific grades, one at the elementary level and, and, and one kind of at, at the middle, almost the threshold at the high school level. And the NAEP is a huge test. It's across the country. Um, I'll talk about what this data means in a minute. Um, it is across the country, um, and it also is used by the federal government to take a look at how the states are performing. Um, it was probably a piece that came out of No Child Left Behind and on the accountability piece. So you got two colors here. Um, you've got orange and you've got blue. Um, blue is how the state was performing on NAEP. Orange is how the district was performing in terms of SPAC. Again, absolute data might be comparable, might not. What the data points are telling you is what percentage of kids hit the proficiency threshold. So, you know, the high number here for the, our district was that in 2022, which was last spring after three years of COVID, 72% of our students hit the proficiency threshold or higher on the SBAC. But if you take a look at the long-term trend going all the way back down to 2006, our kids have been improving, they've been growing. What's been happening across the country and in the state they've been going down. Okay. Since I don't have the state SPAC data, I can take the trend data from NAEP, which again, similar exam, and they've been dropping, we've been going up. Based upon the interpretation from the last rounds of the ENDS uh, document, we are in compliance. And that's a pretty damn high score from all the nonsense that I heard during the opening statements in here. Do we have, do you have our NAEP data? They don't break it out by school. Oh, they don't break it they out. Break they break it out by, by state. state. It's, okay. a, uh, it's a quality test that the, the Congress put into place. Mm -hmm. um, but it does track pretty well uh, because, again, the Vermont scores are actually doing the same thing that the national scores are doing. Vermont, the only difference is, is that the Vermont scores on NAEP are here. National scores are doing the same thing. They're just a step below. So the red line there is what? The orange line is us. Blue. But how do we know? Because we have that information internally. If so what they, the what, what they gave us um, is we had the individual student data, right? Because we have to, at the end of every year, based on federal law, we have to send out those letters about how your kid did on the, the last round, so that has to happen. But they have not given us the combined state data to be able to look at. We were able to take that individual data and thank God for Crystal and the rest of us that are mathematicians and take all those individual students and do some massaging of the data to get these data points, which is difficult. So a couple of times Lane said SBAC, but he meant NAEP on this slide. So blue is NAEP, orange is SBAC. So on SBAC in, in 2022, our fourth graders, right, 72% of them hit the proficiency threshold. And you can see what was happening prior to COVID as well, right? They were doing, we started the work at the elementary schools uh, the year after I started here when I started to get a feel for what was going on. You saw that rising, COVID hit, you got the expected drop. And now we had kind of a normal year last year, even though it was disrupted. And now not only are they back up, but they're back up above where they ever were before. Again. Can I ask a clarifying? And this, by the way, is math. So these are our SBAC scores. The orange. The orange. Okay. So our students took the SBAC. The NAEP, but they have not yet taken the NAEP. They took the NAEP last year, a, a, a smattering of our students. They do NAEP testing every other year. So they come into so most of the fourth schools. fourth graders took the NAEP test. A sampling of our fourth graders took the NAEP. But all fourth graders took the SBAC. In our school, I can't say that for other schools. So you're getting into actually some really good questions. 
for the the testing on these the state state tests like SBAC or MCAS if we're back in Massachusetts to count you have to have 95 percent of your students actually mm -hmm. take it yeah. we hit 95 percent every year with the SBAC with the SBAC we hit that most schools did not so it becomes even kind of difficult to compare ours with the state data even if it were out because you know the students if they're self-selecting who's taking the SBAC Usually not the kid. It's usually the kids that want to take it because they think they're going to do well. So if we had 95 percent of our kids taking the SBAC, what percentage of our students took the? I'd have to go back and look. Um, I think it would. In our case, it was the majority of the fourth grade, if not all of them. You said a sampling. Who chooses the sample? The, uh, the federal government. They basically send us a letter and said, on these dates, you will. That's and they tell you which students to sample. Yeah. Um, if I'm remembering without going back and looking at the actual letter, I think it was our entire fourth grade. I would, I would appreciate that information. Yeah. Well, in the blue but, but, line, but again, this, it's this all blue of the line state. is not. So oh, that's okay. not this is, this our is school. This is a combined it's state the whole scoring. State. This is not. This is not our yeah. school. So you can't oh, they, compare. Oh, thank you for that clarification. The, yeah. the, the blue line is is so they don't give us how our school did with Nate. Okay. They take the the samplings from all the schools around the state and say, this is how Vermont as a state did. Mm -hmm. So, so that's we can't what, compare our students right now on no. these on these two tests. We can compare the trends. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. And the trend is is that the state on average is going down, the nation on average is going down, but our fourth graders in math are going up and going up at a significant rate compared to everybody else. And again, I'd like to be using the state SBAC data, but I don't think we're ever going to see it. At the VSBA, the, the people in the assessment workshop that I went to said it's going to be coming, it's just, it's it, it has to come to, to keep continue to continue. To they the haven't aggregated it. They were talking statistical language. They're, they're, they're three years behind. So if, if and when they get caught up, I'll be surprised. I'm wondering if they're going to ask for a waiver because they're moving to a new assessment system. They're just going to forget about it and start fresh with Cognia. That's what I'm worried about. Again, I have no, no reason except a little bit of logic to believe that. So again, so here is uh, OSSD, this is fourth grade math, math. This is only looking at the three COVID years, what was happening. Um, so if you only look at the trend lines for those, those three years or so, right, you see here that the state as a whole, it was kinda, kinda level for the most part, going down just a hair. In our case, we were increasing by quite a bit. We were actually increasing by 8.5 percentage points per year. So every year that went by, for the fourth grade class, 8.5 percent more of the entire fourth grade class was hitting the proficiency level than the year before. Eighth grade math trends. So look at our eighth graders. We're looking at our older students here, right? Blue. Right, we started out in a very low place long kind of before I even came on board. Had progress, right? Had some good jumps here. We had a, that weird year. We talked about this last time. A lot of this was um, still can't figure out why the heck that, that happened. But right, got up, had some high years, had to drop down during COVID. Huge jump, a little bit of a decline in, in 2022. But overall, our trend line is on the way up, um, which is a good sign. And again, we've actually surpassed, starting out from a very low point, right? Only 12% of our kids, 11% of our kids actually hitting the proficiency threshold way back in 2015, you know, to the point where we're up around 30, close to 35, 33. Okay. Not where we want to be, but it's tripled. There's work that's going on. If we look specifically at the math during the, the COVID years, you know, the three years that should have been the most difficult to have any improvements whatsoever in our eighth grade class, on average of those three COVID years, every year that went by, 6.3% more of the entire eighth grade class was hitting the proficiency threshold than was the year before. And again, state was going down, we were going up. 
And we can do the same thing with ELA. ELA is not quite as dramatic. They had a little bit more trouble for some reason following COVID, right? It's kind of where I came in somewhere around in here. Um, you start seeing the increase, right, from the work that was happening, especially at the elementary school at time. You get the drop from the COVID hit, and then you see the recovery in 2022, even though 2022 was a tough year. Are we increasing by a whole heck of a lot? No, but we're going up. State certainly is not. Eighth grade, oh, sorry about that. This is fourth grade. This is specifically looking at the three COVID years, right? It's kind of flat. State's going down. We had a, a minor drop, right, in 2021, but we're actually above where we were when COVID started a little bit. What does it mean? Our students are improving faster than the state and the nation in ELA and math. And that improvement happened during the most challenging time for teachers in living memory. And so I get very upset, as hard as it is to keep my mouth shut when people are misquoting and misinforming when they come into these sessions. Um, because what it does is it disenfranchises the teachers who did the work to make this happen during an incredibly difficult time in history. Um, so questions, thoughts? <coughs> Is there a way um, we can share this information maybe after public comment? <laughs> um, I, I made Where sure that I put, put some of the basics out um, yeah. in the, the community message. Right. Um, and that was because, you know, only 5% of your kids are, are, are hitting an AP score. Well, no, AP scores are three and above that the colleges will accept. Some of the high tier colleges, a Harvard or a um, you know, or a Yale it might only accept fours and fives, but it starts at three. That's the cutoff. Right. So that was misinformation that was spoken um, here today. Um, and it's actually 38% of our kids are hitting it. And then some, depending upon some of the classes, um, some of them were just created in the last year or two. It's a little bit lower. Classes that have been here for a while, it's, it's higher. Some of our classes, it was 100% we're hitting it. So you know, again, well, and your number, I mean, when you're looking at statistics and you have five kids in the class or four kids taking the class, it's hard to say, oh, you know, you could say 100%, but it's, it's hard. Well, there's, there's, I mean, a, the numbers there, there's are a couple small. other ways that I can actually answer that question. Mm -hmm. Important piece is, is, is unlike most schools, there are some pretty strict prerequisites to be able to take some AP courses to make sure that the kids are gonna be successful so that their numbers are high. And that's important, we used to do it at Marblehead and Belmont because uh, the Newsweek rankings are based primarily, almost solely on how many of your kids are taking AP exams and where they're scoring, which I think was being quoted here. Mm -hmm. We have a small school, we don't have a lot of kids that take it, but the first thing that they look at is how many kids, what percentage of your, your students are taking the, the AP, and then you know how are they doing. Um, we let any kid take an AP course who wants one because of the equity, it's fair, it's just. And we learned, we did some research when I was at Belmont, we found that a kid that took an AP course and got a C in it actually learned a heck of a lot more than a kid that took an honors course and got an A in it. And so it made sense to kind of open it up to everybody who can. In terms of this, I can actually try to talk a little bit more in detail. There were lots of asterisks on the NAEP data, the blue lines. There were groups that they did not include in their testing data. Students of color were not well represented when they did their testing. Students of poverty were not well represented in the testing. Those are both marginalized groups in terms of school systems that typically perform lower. So while we included everybody in our testing, they took out a number of groups in their testing and stuck primarily with the regular white population. How do you know? Did it say that somewhere? Yeah, little asterisks on the data when I was going through and taking a look at it. 
Um, so this is actually, even though it's going down, it's actually a little higher than it probably would be if they kept in all the sub subgroups and, and really wanted you to show the impact of, of those marginalized groups. Why would the national data take that out? Why, I have why? no idea. My guess is, is again, we don't want to, unless you lived in the schools during the time of COVID, there could have been a lot of reasons why. Mm -hmm. um, just because of the difficulty of, of testing and, and everything else that, that, that was going on at the time. Like I said, a lot of the schools, you know, one of the reasons that Dan said, Dan French, the secretary at the time, said, you know, you can't, you can't take the data, especially for comparison. Well, that was because, you know, some schools, maybe only 38% of their kids actually took the, the um, MCAS or the, the SAS. Yeah, yeah. um, in our case, it was 95 or higher each time. You know, we, we really went after it. The other thing that we fight here, and it's still a part of the culture, was for years um, students were told to blow it off. Um, the state testing, oh, I got a lot of AP courses that, that I'm taking, you know, this is going to be too much of a, a hassle to have to take the S back, and people would just excuse them from taking it. Um, I don't know how they got away with it because it put them under that 95% threshold, but for some, somehow they did. Um, if that happened in Massachusetts, um, Two years in a row, if you, you know, if I if I was at ninety four point four percent, ninety four point you know nine percent um, in two years, they would have come in and they would have put some pretty strict sanctions in place on us. It doesn't happen in Vermont, um, so it's just it's kind of interesting to look at the data. Um, but we do have a, a very high um, poverty population, right? and so you know, there is progress going on in pockets. Um, it's getting better now that we've got got the systems to to manage it. So at least in terms of ELA, I've got some comparisons I can show again. The absolute data might be comparable. I, I can't say for sure. I tried to do a little bit of research. Um, the last time that somebody tried to compare SBAC to um, NAEP data was like in 2015 or 14. And so it just didn't seem appropriate if there were seven or eight years that had passed on the absolute side. But you know there is a correlation between the two. But the trend data, are students getting better? Are they getting are they are they getting worse? That you can tell a lot about. And so next time, hopefully, what we'll be looking at is we'll be looking at the um, adaptability end in the special education data, assuming we get get, get what we need. So do you ever call or talk to anybody in person at the? State education. Yeah, Dan, Dan, Dan actually, I give him, give him credit, he met with us. And he ago. says, what about the timeline for the they told They told us mid November for the state, state, the release of the state aggregated data. So when you went to the website and it wasn't working, like, do you call the office and say, hello, what's the deal? Can you send me my Oh, it's, it's obvious what's going on. They're creating a new website from scratch. Um, and my guess is, is that they're trying to get up to date. Typically, in most scenarios, that's something that, you know, we get messages from the AOE, from the, usually from the secretary, the superintendents do, that kind of outline the things they're working on and what's changing and what to expect. But this was another one that we didn't get a message on. We didn't get a message on the fact that they were changing us back until just before the board meeting last. So, you know, that, that happens. So the communication piece there is, is tough sometimes. So when you compile the SBAC data internally, you take, like, do you get a report of everybody's scores, like everybody in the school, and then you take if them they, by... If they have their data the way that it's supposed to be, we get it by aggregate for the state. This is how all third graders in the state perform. This is how the third graders in your district perform. This is how the third graders in Braintree perform. This is how the third graders in Brookfield. So you get all that data. In the report that they haven't sent you yet? Usually. Okay, so the report that you have that you just presented, that We looked at individual students and, and put the pieces together ourselves because we had the data for each individual student. All How does that come to you? And just like, this is all You know the graders. letters you get when your kids take the, that's how it comes so to So you us. get a copy of the letter? And you have them all in a file by grade, and you just go through and enter. One by one by one, yep. and then, yeah. So it's not, not, not a good use of people's time, um, especially when the state does it anyway, and it should be getting the data out on time. So, but yeah, no, there's, um, 
can see but I, there's a lot of these are and usually I compile it and there's a lot of massaging and there's a lot of data and there's a lot of parts and pieces that go into being able to just to create the graphs for you but we track all this stuff in pretty good detail uh, so when we have it Lee, when you say you massage the data it doesn't sound right <laughs> <laughs> we're not changing no so we're taking individual data and using it okay that's how I we're going to put all the third graders together and sound. find out what the average is that's what I mean by massage okay we'll put all the fourth graders together and find out what the no, we're not. We're not changing it. So, I'm sure. You I'm sure your, we'll hear that at the next next uh, next. You did session. your own aggregation of the data. Uh, and give Crystal uh, cr the Crystal Larock a, a lot of credit for that. Um, but again, so that's that's this piece, and the the goal is next time is to take a look at that adaptability end. Um, one of the the only difficulty with that one is that um, it relies on graduation data. Again, that's. Uh, something that comes officially from the state which we have not received yet um, so but there's other parts and pieces to that we can talk about next round okay so are you going to write this up in an end report i was hoping i'd get the data and just be able to do the and data just, okay but wait at on the data. some point we will get it, a full yeah and report with all of this information in it. Yep. You're you're presenting it as we go along, and then and again, my interpretation done, we'll does not it. my interpretation does not use Nate. I'm just right, we're having the right. discussion you're, with what we got. Yeah, so. yeah, get it, get it, got it. Uh huh. I just want to make sure at some point we the end. This is the interpretation. This was the data we have for it. Even if it ends up having to be. I'm going to use the the NAEP data because that's all I got. Well, then I have to go and that's a, that's going to be a major piece because I have to go back and change the interpretation and the rationale for why it's a good mm. data point to use and it's it's ugly. The other reality is is that like I said, the departments are actually working on this was the the, the vision from way back when. It's the actual departments, the math department and the English department that are right. deciding the, these based upon this end, this is what it means to have foundational knowledge, this is how we're going to assess it, and this is why we're going to right. do it that way. Okay. So they have that work nearly complete. And so you, the whole ends document is going to change. The we'll goal change. is they're presenting that data to me or coming in and presenting the data to the board. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that will be for the Hopefully next... by next year. The next end report. Yeah. So this is looking back yep. to last year, which you're using the... Old, the, the what I can get my format that you did from the previous year. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, so moving on, um, we have uh, board policy 4.4, mm -hmm. and um, I had I remember each month you had you all had asked for the next month's self eval to be in the packet and I didn't get it out in time for Linda to put it in the packet so that's why it came separately and I know a few of you don't have printers so hopefully I copies oh you brought copies oh yay so that's for 4.5 that's for the for the December meeting yes. so if you need a copy so that you've got it but for right now, we're going over 4.4, which you had from your packet before. Um, yeah. And it is in the current packet? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. 4.4. OK. Um, so, uh, so in this, remember, what we're doing is we're looking um, this is how we're doing an evaluation of ourselves as the board in terms of are we following our policies? Are we doing um, what we've stated in policy that we'll do? Um, and unless somebody has a new way of going through it, I'm going to just have us kind of look at each section of the policy and check in with um, sort of what people felt. So this policy has to do with the chair's role. Um, the first section of the policy, the chair, a specially empowered member of the board, 
ensures the integrity of the board's process and secondarily occasionally represents the board to outside parties. So has your chair been doing that? <laughs> this is sort of a, uh, an evaluation of your chair. Um, so I would say always, always, um, and example would be one would be with the emails and how you're responding to those mm -hmm. on behalf of the rest of the board. Okay. Any other comments or concerns? Okay. Moving on to the next section in the policy, the assigned result of the chair's job is that the board behaves consistently with its own rules and those legitimately imposed on it from, the out, from outside the organization, for example, like from the state. Um, so one, meeting discussion content will consist solely of issues that clearly belong to the board to decide or to monitor according to board policy. Um, so have we been doing that? Are we keeping to our agenda? Are we staying in the board's domain? Are we getting into operational decision making? We are definitely not getting into operational decision making. Okay, so it's hard. It's hard not to, right? <laughs> but we are not doing that. We are staying at the board level, policy level. Um, number two, information that is for neither monitoring performance nor board decisions will be avoided or minimized and always noted as such. So that those are those things that go into the consent agenda. Those are things that are required by the state, but we've delegated to Lane to take care of, but he has to have us take a look at it and approve it um, because of state law. You've got a divisive policy you're gonna have to start looking at next time. Uh oh, are you <laughs> required under state law? Okay, which, which one is that? So that's the. Um, is that the equity? Are they doing making? No, this it's the non-discrimination in mascots and. Oh, okay. Uh, school branding. So we'll okay. See that next time. So get prepared so, for your next round. So remember, one of his jobs, one of our policies, says he has to make sure that our district has all of the state mandated required policies so um, and then because of state law we have to approve them um, so uh, so that's that section deliberation will be fair open and thorough but also timely orderly and kept to the point I'd say most of the time <laughs> Some of the time. Yeah, most of the time we can get <laughs> yeah. distracted and yeah, um, we have time management issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no sense of time. I will own that. I, for me, a half an hour can sometimes feel like it was five minutes. So um, I've been relying on Katya a lot. She's done an excellent job of just sort of being the timer, which I really appreciate. <laughs> um, but that, that um, could always be improved upon. Uh, the next section, the authority of the chair consists in making decisions that fall within topics covered by board policies on governance process and board management delegation with the exception of uh, employment or termination of a superintendent, so the chair can't do that. Uh, areas where the board specifically delegates portions of this authority to others. Can't think of an example of where we've done that. Um, the chair is authorized to use any reasonable interpretation of the provisions in these policies. Um, so one, the chair is empowered to chair board meetings with all the commonly accepted powers of that position, such as ruling and recognizing. I think I've been trying to do that fairly well. Um, 
Any comments? Concerns? Uh, the chair has no authority to make decisions about policies created by the board within ends and executive limitations policy areas. Remember, we work as a board as a whole, so we make decisions as a board. The chair doesn't have any special authority to make, make decisions in that area. Um, therefore, the chair has no authority to supervise or direct the superintendent. Superintendent is here. I haven't been telling you to do things on the side. Um, so um, I know perhaps, oh, maybe that was in the next section. Yeah, three, the chair may, may represent the board to outside parties in announcing board stated positions and in stating chair decisions and interpretations within areas delegated to her or him and report such activity at the next meeting of the board. Um, there, I've tried to let people know if I've said something. So, like, that's why I liked being able to CC you all when I responded to somebody's email. So you all didn't get to see one of the emails that I sent just explaining to someone who didn't, who was contending that I responded to somebody during public comment. And so I shared with them the preamble stating again that we I may respond if I'm going to explain that you can use the complaint procedure or you can contact such and such a staff person so um, I've been trying to make sure that I share that information with people so they know any other concerns in that area mm -hmm. okay uh, the chair may delegate this this authority, but remains accountable for its use. Um, I haven't really delegated much. Periodically, I've delegated to Katya. <laughs> um, little things here and there. Um, the chair will ensure that the board fulfills its obligations and works to improve the board's performance. Um, been trying to do that. <laughs> Encourage you all to go to the VSBA conference. Um, hopefully, you know, the board decided, you know, that we wanted to kind of have things in this binder. I think that will be helpful for all board members to just kind of not rely on one person to remember everything or to have all that um, sort of knowledge so that it's shared so everybody knows how we're operating. Um, all right, so um, we're supposed to select one area for improvement. I have one area for improvement. So I think um, it's it's Policy governance is tough, right? And sometimes it's hard to like not get in the weeds of the management of what's going on, especially when there's controversial issues like what's happening now. I do think it's helpful to speak with one voice through the mm -hmm. chair. I think it's impossible to do that unless we can meet to talk about things. So I think it's important that if board members request meetings that we have them because mm -hmm. there's a reason people want them it's not for nothing and so when that happens I think it's important to be respectful of those requests and to also um, at the end of them or during these controversial times have the board speak through the chair with one voice out to the public and making statements mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a policy for that where it would fall mm -hmm. so um, what I'm hearing you say is you're you would like to see our board um, when it says the chair may represent the board to outside parties and announcing board stated positions and in stating chair decisions and interpretations within the area delegated to her or him and report such activity at the next meeting of the board Okay, so 
what I'm hearing you say is you would like, when we have these controversial issues, you would like to have our board meeting and making a statement more than we have. Not remaining silent. Not remaining quiet. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, and what I also hear you saying is to, in order to come up statement. with those statements that requests for special meetings be honored yes. and happen. I don't think they're anything to be scared of. I don't think they're anything to be like, um, should we do it? Should we not do it? Like, I think it's just good sometimes to have a meeting so people can talk and he mm -hmm. hear what each other has to say and come to an agreement or not come to an agreement, but mm -hmm. at least have a place to discuss some of this. Yeah, yeah. I think that's important. I think the only recognition we have to have is those meetings need to be done. They have to be warned open. and have to be open. So there are very few yeah. cases for which we can go into executive session. And this is sometimes situations where we may want to have executive session. And we can't? We may right. not be able to find under the um, statutes a reasonable allowance to go into executive session, which is fine. But then you're like the recognition openly. that potentially those meetings will have to be in an open setting and cannot be an executive session. Right. So that's difficult. So just, yeah, just recognize. Well, it's difficult, but it also is the opposite of silence. So if our only option is to have difficult and potentially awkward or, um, not uh, um, creating more or less conflict, that, in <clears throat> my opinion, is better than silence, especially when we have public comment filled with asking us not to be silent. Mm -hmm. So if we can't do it privately, then we have to do it publicly, but I don't, but can't not. And in my opinion, advice and counsel from legal counsel that can always be that can be an executive, an executive session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is a way to be able to conduct executive session with legal counsel present on but a topic or issue. Discussions leading up to the to that to the legal counsel would would be an open session. Mm -hmm. yep. And obviously, no no decisions can be made in executive sessions. We can't draft an article or anything. In executive session, correct? We could come up with a statement in executive session. Yeah, but you'd have to vote, you have to vote, vote to, 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 to direct vote the, the chair. Oh, right, you could, yeah. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, but, but, but you wouldn't have to vote on what the statement is. No. You could just come out and say, you know, you know we're coming out and we're, we're voting that, you know, we're going to direct the chair to. Or to the legal counsel to create a, yeah, exactly, right. to, to right. create a statement in terms of our. Our position. So if we had legal counsel there, we could enter into executive session Would with you have legal right counsel. To keep that information yeah. Yeah. So it seems like we should do more of that. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So the discussion still has to be public. Yes. The discussion to, to go into executive session. Yeah. The discussion of the topics are, are public. The guidance from the attorney is private. Is private. Okay. So well, the attorney can help guide us make a statement so that right. like we can all talk about it openly, go with into executive attorney. session with the attorney, come up with a statement that you then present to the public so that we're not silent. That right. seems like a way to make it work. Well, Topics of controversy. I highly recommend that you go with whatever statement that legal counsel creates. Yeah. yeah. Another general question: Over when we were reviewing these, um, you know, one of the actions we do is select one area of this policy for improvement over the next mm -hmm. year. But then we move on to the next policy, at the next meeting, and. How are we holding ourselves accountable to actually? Well, because we, you see that we have in here. Um, 
What actions will we commit to in the next year to improve our application of this policy? Who will be accountable for leadership to ensure it happens? Well, I think that's, yeah, that's kind of my question. Like, we when, we, prog when we do this, how are we making sure that we're actually, like, next month, we're looking back at what we've reviewed last month and we're actually making action, we're doing those actions that we're committing to? Well, when do we want to reassess our progress on this? We could say we want to do it at the next meeting. Okay. Um, would, would the board like to do that? Are we going to have more? <laughs> what they just said, we're going to have to have a a new state required policy so maybe we'll have another controversy and we might need to have so a special that? meeting so when do we so it so one of the things we have in here if you look on the last page it says when will we re reassess our progress i'm just i'm, and I'm saying this more of like in a general term yeah. with all mm -hmm. of these because i feel like we review them we select an area we talk about the actions and then typically we're like we'll reassess this progress in a year but are we actually like it's on our it's on our annual agenda so like in a year we'll review this we'll again go back. and yeah. say yes did we did over we? the last year commit to making a statement publicly if a controversy that we all felt like required a, a certain meeting and made mm -hmm. a statement. Did that happen? Yes or no? In a year, when we review this again. Make sense? All right. <laughs> I'm getting really tired. I know. What time is it? <laughs> so I got my flu shot today and I'm like, oh. a little bit. Uh, we're at 8.30. We've got Heather coming at 8.20. Oh, so just let her know we're like we're we're real close. Okay, well let's let's get there fast. All right, so we're we're good. So I'm and I've been hanging on to these. Um, okay. Maybe what I'll do is put it in some sort of format. Well, I um, think like that, like you know how we were like review minutes from the previous meeting. Right. Like I almost feel like that would be a great thing to have. Like this was what we reviewed, and this is what we all came up with and just so we can all like be like oh okay yeah we remember that and then next year we'll review it again well do we want to review this one at the next meeting or at the no 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 okay so next year yeah. so we're good with next year um well, we should have a place where we have the yeah the so i may i may have you i may bring you my my things to just mm -hmm. your notes okay. have in a <laughs> thing so that we can refer back to them i've just been keeping them mm -hmm. um and they're not they're kind of messy okay. and i'm printing on scrap paper <laughs> but i will um well at least we can have some sort of record plus it's on our and you, you remember when, I, when i'm saying our annual agenda that's the whole year Remember, we looked at that at the beginning in August, you know, what happens, and each one of these policies that we review is on that, and it'll be there again next year, so we, it sort of prompts us to do that um, review again. Um, but when we do that, then we can look at, okay, what did we say we would focus on, and we can make sure we've done that as part of that review. I know we're trying to hurry, but I have one more question. Sure, in terms sure. Of the special meeting. So, if a board member requests a special meeting, is it up to the chair to say, "Well, I don't think there's reason to have one"? Yeah, so no? and that happened. Um, and mm -hmm. the other thing is, emergency meetings. It has to be an emergency. Right, but there's a distinction between special and emergency. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So mm -hmm. what got requested was an emergency meeting. Mm -hmm. An emergency meeting is an emergency meeting. Um, so emergency defined by whom? Defined, uh, so legal counsel gives you the idea of what. So an emergency, so like during Irene, an emergency so meeting could wait. be the water is running, you've got all these people together to figure out how you're going to stop the water from going. An emergency meeting could be, I don't know, we have some emergency here and you need a board decision and we need to get together. You don't have to warn it, it's just 
poof, it happens. And I should look at our, our it says in here, what, what um, counts as an emergency meeting. So what we could have had was a special meeting, but what got requested was an emergency meeting. And um, I was actually away. Katya spoke with legal counsel, and I believe the emer there wasn't an emergency. Um, so it's on the fourth page of the Vermont Legal Services Council. Okay, so emergency meeting, a special meeting, regular meeting. So saying we'd like to request a special meeting. Special meeting, yeah, that happens. So uh, let's see, emergency meetings. There is no specific requirement for announcing and posting notice for emergency meetings, which are held only when necessary to respond to an unforeseen occurrence or condition requiring immediate attention by the public body. Creating a statement by the board doesn't isn't an emergency. I would I would argue it depends I, upon what the situation is. Oh uh, yeah, I guess Your so. The building so, just collapsed. Yeah, okay, but that's the emergency is the building collapsed. Well, it's, but this is this is a very subjective thing though what yeah. what constitutes an emergency? Death threats I think constitute an emergency. A lawsuit? A lawsuit certainly. Uh Let's see. What and I, would, I would I would disagree. I would mm -hmm. say those can wait 48 hours for the special meeting status and yeah. being warned. So I so I request well, an emergency. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, let me, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so, but and what would the board do about I'm it? speaking vaguely about this. But so what I would request an emergency you about a death threat, right? Like, w so I would have loved guidance. Hey, why don't why don't we see if we can get a special meeting together? Because this doesn't. I I feel like there was just a very. We're not going to do that. And personally, I felt it was an emergency, but not by school board rules, and that's fine. Guidance would have been good, and but there was just this shutdown. What I felt was a shutdown of communication. We're not going to do it. We'll come. We'll hear public comment, and yet again, not we. It there. It's not. We're not saying anything. Be, a. We can't in public comment, but recognize. And I'm happy to say this publicly because I've said it to them directly. Recognize the group of people that is coming in to make public comment is choosing venues on purpose to make sure that there is no comment back. I had a two hour open forum, but all these folks were, were at. Not one of them asked a question. And that is not the first time when Black Lives Matter came up, it was primarily the same group of folks. I held two open forums before board meetings they were there they would not ask questions about the issue and when we asked them specifically about it at the Braintree piece and said hey I had that open forum how come people weren't asking questions because we don't want to talk with you so it's disingenuous for them to come in and say that people aren't talking when they don't want to talk to us they are choosing these venues on purpose because it's a one-sided conversation. They have been advised by me repeatedly, look, if, you, if you've got good stuff here, you've got a right to your beliefs and you want to talk with the board, you reach out to Linda and you ask her to put it on the, uh, see if they can get put on the agenda so that you can have that discussion. So they've, they've had that information for a while. Um, so I would just argue, at least in the case of, of, of these folks, if we can get a discussion with them, I think it would be awesome and I think it would be very beneficial. But my experience has been the last thing they want is an open discussion. But we can put it on the agenda. So in hindsight, then, <laughs> I wish I had requested a special meeting with the agenda item of discussing the board's placement. This isn't about I want to discuss how I feel personally. I mean, I'd love to discuss how I feel personally, but but a, a special meeting so that the board is saying something, responding. Not responding to each and every person. That's not what we do, and we need to find, we, we speak in a common voice. Let's find out what our voice is. What is our voice going to say about this? I, I also don't want to dismiss 
the people coming to the meeting and saying something in public comment. If, if that's how they are choosing to do it, let, I want to honor that. That's where they want to do it. Perhaps they don't want to be responded to personally. Hey, you said that, so we're going to say this back to you. But we as a board are going to say something about why we have better attendance at this meeting than we do, you know, usually, or when a controversy isn't going on. Um, but each time one has come up, we take a lot of hits for, we'll sit here and listen, we'll have stoic faces, and then not say anything about it as a board. Mm -hmm. And maybe we don't say anything about it, the, the issue, but we say, this is who we are as a board, and this is how we function, you know, and we support this group, this group, this group, this group, which is basically all of our people. Or part of the PR piece is that, you know, because again, they're, my impression, so I gotta be clear, and my experience, is they're not looking for a two-way conversation. This is an opportunity to come in um, some of them very genuine in terms of beliefs. There are other matters in terms of some of the other discussions that are going on. But it's an opportunity to hear them and potentially, based upon what you've heard collectively, afterwards responding with a, yeah, we've heard, we've heard you, that, you know, we, yes. we have these concerns as well, or these are things that we should talk about more. Please, you know, let's set up, we'll, we'll set up a time at the next board meeting to have an open discussion. Because unless there's an open discussion, nothing gets resolved. The one problem that I see with some of that is they want to talk operational. We don't do operational. I would he love to have that. an opportunity to respond to the things that they have said. I, they have not given me that opportunity. And remember, we do, we do policy because we're so, a policy governance no board. no if you go if you even look at if you talk with vsba also mm -hmm. we are looking at policy uh, is our administration following policy procedure protocols mm -hmm. is it fair so what and what the discussion that folks want is we want to talk about how we run the 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 locker room that's their talk. realm that's not our domain so, 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 so our domain is the policy that we're following from the state yeah like that that can be that is so also we can education look. as to what the school board does or, or, mm -hmm. or Lane has invited you in multiple times to talk at his open forums or talk with him in person or talk with him please take advantage of that Will they? Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Right. I just think that saying something is important. Yeah. It goes no, with I, that ownership here, language, yeah. and I think it's important to bring that back to the board so we're not just this like weird group that doesn't do anything. Well, when do or we kind of get anything? to a point where the board is also like part of crisis management? Like, that's my. Well, and maybe we need to move on so we can talk with Heather because she might be able to help mm -hmm. help us understand as a board what our role is in these kinds of controversial issues because they're going on not just in our district but in other districts. Mm -hmm. But what we need to remember is we're we're looking at the policy level. We're not looking at the operational level. And some of what legal counsel will will be advising us is we are we are following state law, federal law. It's it it's not going to be uh, a discussion about how we're going to manage the locker room. Right. That that's As not going to be. But we haven't even said that as a board. Yeah. Which, but you have you have said that we there, have there is a conflict resolution protocol. This is who you need to talk to. And if they choose not to talk to those folks, which has been the case, then that's on them. 
it's not like we haven't been open. It's not like we haven't been inviting. It's not like we haven't struggled despite the controversy and potentially putting my life in danger and the lives of other people in danger to have those open forums that evening that we haven't been there and been available to actually have that conversation with folks. Um, and so again, there's, there, I get, I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm more in agreement with you even though I'm it's probably not the, but they've had uh, plenty of opportunities and people have taken great. So at some point in time, it literally has to be said is that these are your opportunities, take them. If not, then move on. Um, if you have legitimate complaints, you know, I told that to John Clark half a dozen times. If you think you have legitimate complaints, then you need to file it so people can investigate and can take a look. That's the appropriate way that we do things. Lawsuits, I commend them for filing a lawsuit because that's the civil way of doing things. That's why they exist. Appeals are the civil way of doing things. Raining down terror and violence on a school district is not the way to do things. Right. So we all get that. But just having a discussion about it and yeah. making a statement to the public would be, seems like a thing we could do. And I'm not in disagreement. To help that. our ownership yeah. linkage. Mm -hmm. Noted. And, um, and so in requesting meetings going forward, it's helpful to hear how that needs to be and yeah the yes. kind of meeting it needs to be and what will happen and all of that yeah and I think I think we did respond we to to the one request for the emergency meeting and we we I included the legal counsel advice on that I don't think and I ever went got out that to email. Everybody. I know there was like four of us that asked for an, a meeting. At, maybe it was a emergency meeting, and clearly that was not the right thing to ask for. But I don't know. It never happened. Here we are. It's all okay. fine. Just going noted. forward. Duly noted, okay. and I appreciate you bringing it up. Um, and it is on here now as our goal is to make sure that we are making statements and and meeting and that I'm so the other thing is though please just one at a time so um so just for that open email meeting. yeah yeah because then it yes. becomes an open it. meeting so it's got to be um uh just a direct email to me okay so I'm going to have, uh, we need to just, I'm going to have us move to, so the, the next couple of things on the agenda, um, the VSBA conference, the consent agenda is the meeting notes, um, but I'm, we had, are you texting with Heather? I texted her and said we'd be 10 minutes, but that was more than 10 minutes ago. Okay. Um, so I'm now I can't. I'm the discussion on the VSBA. On the VSBA. Is that no? Okay. Uh, any discussion? None. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we're going to table that. And um, consent agenda. Um, move to approve the minutes, move to approve the minutes yeah, by Katja, seconded by Megan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So we've done that. Uh, negotiations, shall we, do we want to table that? We're all on the different negotiation committees, kind of know what's going on. Are we? They're all ongoing, correct? Good to so, go. Yeah. There's no yeah, real. Early. Okay. Okay. Early. So we're going to move on to that. Uh, anything outstanding in the financial report that you're concerned about? No, just the um, what we talked about is that we have that kind of emergency okay. fund that we're funding that we're looking for from the reserve account because of the heating pipe that burst. Okay. That means there's no heat here until it gets fixed and the pipes are under the foundation and <laughs> yeah. underground. Well, like, right. is this, I'm, I'm like, I'm like a so, That's why we got to replace our buildings. And just so you know, we're, you're going to get a doodle poll request for a special meeting because we need to, we've gotten three applicants in for the open Brookfield spot. 
So we're going to need to meet to meet with those candidates. Mm -hmm. So we're, there's going to be a request for a special meeting. We're going to put in that because that's going to be a warned meeting. We're going to put in the... Um, as, as well as, and I want to look at the camera when I say this, as well as the work that started on revamping the four locker rooms on September 27th, we will be asking for the money to complete that work. Okay. So that will be in that, on that special uh, meeting agenda as well. Um, so there we go. And the recap, I'm going to be just checking in with uh, Sean to just finish out that complaint procedure wording. Um, I'll be sending out a doodle poll for ownership linkage. Doodle meeting. poll for the, for the ownership linkage committee meeting. Um, and there is going to be a doodle poll for a special meeting um, for appointing and for the um, surplus funding requests. Okay. Um, so now uh, I need someone to give me a motion to move into executive session. So move for personnel, student, for and personnel for and legal student counsel as well. Issues and legal counsel. I second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you for Thank attending. You for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.